ವೈಟರ್ಣವೆಂದ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿಧಾಂತ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ principles of devotional service. Uh, as we'll see in the verse we'll read, that was his purpose for coming, to show us the process of devotional service. So we'll discuss how through his various pastimes he did that. And then finally we'll conclude with a little bit of a detailed review or um, discussion on his most potent instructions, the Shikshashtakam prayers. He left us with eight very powerful verses. And so we'll discuss those eight verses and next understand how uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was bringing us to the perfection of life through the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. So that is uh, what we'll do. And I have a bit of a hidden agenda I'll acknowledge in the beginning of the class. So I'll reveal that hidden agenda at the end. Uh, but there is an agenda. So. But it's a, it's a good agenda, yeah, I assure you of that. Um, and so, uh, we'll begin by reading from Sri uh, Chaitanya Chaitanya, uh, chapter number four of Adi Lila. The title of the chapter is The Confidential Reasons for the Lord's Appearance. And we'll read uh, text 15 and 16. 
ಪ್ರೇಮ ರಸ ನೀರಸ ಕರಿತೆ ಅಶ್ವದಾನ ರಾಮ ಮರ್ಗ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಲೋಕೆ ಕರಿತೆ ಪ್ರಚಾರ ರಸಿಕ ಶೇಖರ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಮ ಕರುಣ ಏನುವೆ ಹೇತು ಐತೆ ಇಚಾರ ಉದ್ಗಾಮ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬೈಂಗ್ ರೇಸ್ ಏಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿದಾಂತ The Lord's desire to appear was born from two reasons. The Lord wanted to taste the sweet essence of the mellows of love of God. And he wanted to propagate devotional service in the world on that platform of spontaneous attraction. Thus he is known as supremely jubilant and as the most merciful of all. During the period of Lord Krishna's appearance, the killing of Asuras or non-believers such as Kaunsa and Jadasana was done by Vishnu, who was within the person of Sri Krishna. Such apparent killing by Lord Sri Krishna took place as a matter of course and was an incidental activity for him. But the real purpose of Lord Krishna's appearance was to stage a dramatic performance of his transcendental pastimes at Rajabhumi. thus exhibiting the highest limit of transcendental mellow in the exchange of reciprocal love between the living entity and the supreme lord these reciprocal exchanges of mellow are called raga bhakti or devotional service to the lord in transcendental rapture lord shri krishna wants to make known to all the conditioned souls that he is more attracted by raga bhakti than vidhi bhakti or devotional service under scheduled regulations It is said in the Vedas, Raso Vaisa, the absolute truth is the reservoir of all kinds of reciprocal exchanges of loving sentiments. He is causelessly merciful, and he wants to bestow upon us the privilege of Raga Bhakti. Thus he appeared by his own internal energy. He was not forced to appear by any extraneous force. ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಾಶ್ಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರು ಮಿಲಿತಂಗೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಗುರು ವಿಷ್ಣು ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಮೇನ ಹೃದಯ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಪಾತಕಾಮಯ ಜಾತಿ ಸ್ವಾಪನಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಜೀವಾಂಸಾಗಜಾತ ಸರ್ಗನ ರಘುನಾಥ ಮಿತಂತ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧೈತ ಸಾಧುತ ಪರಿಧನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾಂಬಿತಾಂಶ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಾಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗಿ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾನೋಸ್ತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯೇ ಪಂಚ ಕಲ್ಪ ತೃಭ್ಯ ಕುಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೇವ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ Is anyone here for the first time for a Gaur Purnima celebration? Hare, Hare Krishna, welcome and congratulations on an extraordinary achievement of receiving the blessings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For those of us who have been coming, as Jodhi Rupa always teaches us, we can pray that we can have one more year together like this in the association of Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, and the most merciful deities. So I'd like the blessings of all the assembled devotees so that we can have a nice discussion today. So, appreciating the gift. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and gave us an extraordinary gift. Krishna Skarviraj Goswami explains further in this fourth chapter that we discussed that Krishna himself is uh, revealing a mood he has. And he says that this gift I'm giving, what I'm coming to give in the, uh, as I appear as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
is something that is not even present within the Vaikuntha planets. And that, it is so extraordinary that it even amazes me. And so this, we can imagine how extraordinary this gift is. Yet it even amazes the Supreme Personality of God. Now, when we receive a gift, the, the one challenge we have is our ability to be able to appreciate what it is. So it's giving the example that if you have a small child, young child, and you give them in one hand some candies, and in the other hand you give them some diamonds, what will that child take? But will we consider that very intelligent? But the, the, the only flaw is that the child does not understand the value of the diamonds as compared to those candies. And so its decision is made accordingly. So similarly, for us, if we really understand the gift that Jaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us and its extraordinary value, then we will hold on to it and cherish it like no other gift that we have. And we can say very confidently on the basis of Shastra and on the basis of the teachings of our Acharyas that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and gave the greatest treasure of the entire creation. There is no greater gift, there is no greater thing one can acquire than Krishna Prabhu. This love of God is so powerful and so extraordinary that it gives one the complete perfection of life. Chila Prabhupada in the beginning of the Nectar of Devotion explains very vividly this concept of love of Krishna. He says that all of us, we have this loving propensity. And without the presence of love, Whatever we have does not satisfy us. We can have all the wealth in the world, all the fame, all the strength, all the intelligence, all the beauty, whatever it is. But if it's not accompanied with loving sentiments that we can share with someone, it will not satisfy us. So Prabhupada said, this is the intrinsic quality of the spirit soul, which is to love and to be loved. But the problem that the conditioned soul has is that it is not understood where to repose that loving propensity. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and taught us that when we learn to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, then everything becomes perfect in our lives. And all those other aspects that we are trying to exhibit love towards also become fulfilled in as much is when you water the root of a tree, all the different branches of the tree are nourished. Similarly, when we repose our love to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, then everything becomes perfect. And this Srila Prabhupada explains very nicely in the beginning of the Nectar and Devotion, which is a book that was based on the instructions from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami, in which he explains the specific steps of how to awaken and bring about this love of Krishna. So this is the greatest of all gifts. There is nothing better one can achieve. And if we are still yet not convinced, no worries. Just remember, we are still in our childhood state, hankering for candies instead of diamonds. But just take for faith that this is actually the greatest of gifts. And we pray to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he will help us in recognizing its true value. And the beauty of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, while he's giving this extraordinary gift, one that even amazes him, that's not even present in the Vaikuntha Lokas, he is giving it with the simplest of process. He says, You don't need to be some erudite scholar, you don't have to have this long history of knowledge of Shastra. No worry about your gender, race, income level, intelligence, doesn't matter, age, any type of designation. Simply by the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord, one can acquire this greatest of gifts. 
To get something extraordinary, you normally have to work very hard for it. Some big degree from a university, some big job position, whatever it is, expertise to be a pianist or a cricket player. It takes work and effort. But Jaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of this unlimited mercy, is giving us his greatest gift with the simplest of crosses. And he is giving it to everyone. No holding it back. He has an endless supply of mercy. And this is what uh, Srila Prabhupada endeavored to spread by coming to America and then spreading this uh, knowledge all over the world to fulfill the mission. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire was that this gift obtained by this process of chanting be known in every town and village. Not every town and village of India or of Bengal, but of every town and village of the world. And this is what makes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so merciful. And then, not only did he give the process, give the gift, he personally came to show us how to obtain it. And this is why he is called Mahabhadan, most merciful. Srila Goswami describes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the most merciful incarnation of the Supreme Lord. And so, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just in quick summary, he is Krishna himself. He is Avatari. He is the source of all avatars. Krishna himself has appeared in the mood of a devotee. And in the mood of a devotee, to show us the process of devotional service. And specifically in the mood of Shimati Radha. The topmost devotee. The topmost reciprocator of love with Krishna. To show us the topmost ability to reciprocate love with Krishna. And so this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the gift he gives. And so, by coming in the mood of a devotee, not proclaiming himself to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he taught us so many lessons. And he showed the path of devotional service by his pastimes. And these pastimes are discussed in uh, two primary literatures, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, which we have here, Hint, 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 this is part of my hidden agenda. <laughs> and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Chaitanya Mahaprabhu covers uh, in primarily uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes from taking sannyas at age 24 through the end of his uh, pastimes. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu covers primarily the beginning, the early years of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's a little bit of overlap. But these two uh, scriptures give us an extraordinary insight into the teachings and activities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it is by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, who inspired both Vrindavan Das Thakur and Krishna Sarvajra Swami to document these pastimes so that all of us can now relish them. And so we are very, very grateful. And grateful to uh, Srila Prabhupada, who presented in addition teachings of Lord Chaitanya, who worked tirelessly to present these scriptures to us so that we may obtain that gift of Krishna Prima and understand the value of it and the process by which we can achieve it. So we are in, eternally indebted to Srila Prabhupada for that great gift. So let us explore some of the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Again, we're going to cover these not in detail, but focus on how he was using these activities to teach us important lessons so that we can walk away understanding what it was that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was trying to teach us. And my hope in, dis in discussing these pastimes is that we'll all be inspired to immediately acquire Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya and begin to read in more detail what we'll discuss in a very summary level today. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, he appeared in the town of Navadvi on the Purnima day in the month of Falgun, in the uh, era, in the year of 1486, a little over 500 years ago, he appeared. And he appeared at the time of an eclipse, a lunar eclipse. And he appeared at that time because Krishna appears when he wants to.
when he chooses to, when he wants, where he can, in all circumstances. That's why Krishna says, Janma karma to me gum. And he says, if you know my Janma and karma, you're all set. Everything is perfect. So he appeared then because he knew everybody would be chanting the holy names of the Lord. So from the very moment of his appearance, he was establishing the single principle that would uh, lay the foundation for everything that he was doing. Everything else that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did was to get us to understand the potency of chanting the holy names of the Lord and to inspire us to take to this process very sincerely. When he was a young child, he would cry incessantly. He would cry and cry. Now the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you know, isn't crying because he is missing something. Right? We cry when we don't have something we want. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nimai as he was known, was crying because when he would cry, the elderly ladies and Sachi Mata, the only way to pacify them, him would be by chanting the holy names of the Lord. So his way of engaging everyone in chanting all day long was to cry as soon as the holy name stopped. And in this way, from the very beginning of his appearance, he very intelligently was engaging everyone in the chanting of the holy names. We know that during his Navaduit Lila, Mayapur pastimes, he enacted and started this Sankirtana movement, the Sankirtana Yagya. He engaged all the devotees in chanting of the holy names. They would gather in the evenings, their nocturnal uh, uh, chanting pastimes in the house of Shiva Sangan, where they would dance and chant in ecstasy for hours on end, relishing the holy names of the Lord. And then they took the chanting process to the streets and began to chant, engaging everybody. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us that even when obstacles come, when threats come to the chanting of the holy name, what should we do? Lie down and give up. Anybody faces obstacles in their endeavors to chant the holy names of the Lord? A few of us, I do. The means is to remain steadfast. When John Kazi tried to stop the chanting of the holy names, coming and even threatening violence, forced conversions, what did they do? Give up? No. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu organized a march with torches and they marched upon John Kazi's house. But as we'll see in several other pastimes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's method of conversion, of uh, removing the conditioning was out of love, not out of force. And he very brilliantly uh, showed Chan Kazi the importance of chanting the holy names and thus uh, got permission and actually got his blessings to perform this great Sankirtan. So this um, pastime we see uh, from the very beginning. Now, one of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, very uh, famous pastimes was when he was a, you know, a teenager. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Krishna in his early days, performed many mischievous pastimes, many funny pastimes we were sharing uh, on uh, Friday and yesterday, a little bit, a few of those. Uh, they are very nicely described in Chaitanya Bhagavad. Um, but as he grew up and he went to school, he very quickly became an extraordinary scholar of Sanskrit. Of course, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so he is uh, uh, only learning what he himself has given to all of us. But in the mood of a, uh, a devotee and a student, he went to school and he very rapidly became an erudite scholar in Sanskrit, so expert. And his fame was, was growing in this regard, and he was known as Nimai Pandit. And Rindavan Thakur describes these um, uh, scholarly pastimes in Chaitanya Bhagavad in quite detail. There's a lot of different purports and meaning to his study of, of Shastra. Um, uh, one of those is that though he was an expert scholar and perfect in all of his Sanskrit knowledge, 
All the devotees, the senior devotees, Advaita Acharya, Shivas Thakur, they were just waiting. When is he actually going to begin preaching devotional service? So he wanted to show that the actual fruit of, your, of our scholarship, the mature, maturation of scholarship is chanting the holy names of the Lord, rendering devotional service. Some foolish like to suggest that for one who is not intelligent, they should take to the process of bhakti. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu established, even before he began to propagate the chanting of the holy names, his expert scholarship. So due to his expert scholarship, uh, there was a, a great pundit, Keshav Kashmir. He was a renowned uh, pundit, and he was going from town to town, defeating all the scholars. And he came to Navadvip. Navadvip at this time, 500 years ago, was an epicenter of scholars. It was known to be uh, a place where very intelligent people resided. So like any champion, they want to go and beat the best, to defeat the best, to be the best, as they say. So he went to Navadweep, and when he came to Navadweep, all the scholars ran away. Nobody wanted to challenge Bishop Kashmir. He was blessed by Mother Saraswati herself to have expert knowledge. So nobody would, would, would get in his way. So once Nimai Pandit, as he was known at that time, was on the banks of the Ganga, and he was teaching his students grammar and Sanskrit. He had opened a school by this time, being so expert. So Keshav Kashmiri came in a mood of great pride to debate with him. And this is where we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's extraordinary mercy. Because like Lord Krishna did uh, to Indra in destroying his pride through the Govardhan Lila, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also destroyed Keshav Kashmiri's pride. But he did so in a very soft and gentle way. Right? When we want to be corrected, we don't like to be you know, forced into, pushed into correction. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so kind and loving that in a very humble way, he destroyed the pride of Keshav Kashmiri. And who is the beneficiary of that losing that pride? It was only Keshav Kashmiri. So when, when he approached Nimai Pandit, he said, I've heard you are Pandit, let us debate. And how did uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu respond? Okay, let's go, let's roll. He said, I am a young boy, I don't know anything. I am not in position to debate with you. So, uh, but I would like to hear something from you. You are a great Pandit. We can recite, uh, compose some nice verses for me. So, Keshav Kashmir said, oh yes. He has already surrendered. Let me show him how great I am. So he immediately composed a hundred verses on the uh, glories of the Mother Ganges. The Ganga was flowing nearby. And he composed these verses on the spot, hundred verses in perfect meter, matching the flow of the Ganga. So expert he was. And so after composing the verses, he asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what do you think? He says, did you hear anything? Yeah, I heard the verses. He says, there were some nice things, but there are also some mistakes. Mistakes? He was shocked that he even could understand one verse. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recites for him the 64th verse that he had composed. And he explains the five nice things that were present within the verse. And then he presents five mistakes. And he says, these are just the beginning. There are actually unlimited mistakes and faults in this verse. Uh, and uh, and Geshe Kashmir was dumbfounded. At that time, the students, the boys who were learning from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, began to ridicule and cheer on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he quickly stopped. Showing great class and character. There is no need to gloat. The only purpose is to try to remove the pride that is in a block in the practice of devotional service. And so Keshav Kashmiri went home that night, understood from Mother Saraswati who Jaitanya Mahaprabhu was. And the next day he came back, surrendered to Nimai Pandit, and became an illustrious devotee of the Lord. 
This is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That when we have impediments in our heart in devotional service, He very mercifully removes them for us so that we can obtain that gift that He has given. Otherwise, we'll be attached to candies and forego this real gift He has given us. Another example where He performed this pastime the same way was when He delivered the sannyasis at Varanasi. On the way back from Rindavan, he stopped at Varanasi and he met the sannyasis there. Tapan Mishra and Chandrasekhar were just in anguish hearing the criticism that these sannyasis were casting upon Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They were calling him a sentimentalist, a fanaticalist, you know, an ignorant fool who could not just understand Vedanta. So much criticism they were casting upon him and they could not tolerate it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this criticism. He didn't care. Again, showing us the mood of a devotee. They can tolerate all kinds of ridicule of themselves. But Tapan Mishra and Chandrasekhar could not tolerate the ridicule of their beloved Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, by arrangement, one Brahmana had come and, and invited Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to have lunch at a place where all these sannyasis were going to be gathered. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided he would pay a visit and in his own very clever way deliver these sannyasis. And again, how he delivered them, not by brute force, not by demonstration of his great character or ability or knowledge, in a very humble way. He reached the house and in the place where one washes their feet, he took a seat. All the other sannyasis were seated on very beautiful elevated platforms. And when he was seated there, he exhibited one of his transcendental pastimes where he shone effulgently like millions of moons. And all the sannyasis were struck just by the luster of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So immediately the leader, Prakashananda Saraswati, went and grabbed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as you see in this little picture, from this place and brought him into the middle of the assembly to receive Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, understanding somebody great has come. So Prakashananda Saraswati then began to address Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, you know, you are a sannyasi. You are a sannyasi coming in a great lineage. But we have a question, why you don't come and join us and study Vedanta? The, 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 the goal of a sannyasi is to meditate and study Vedanta. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replies, his reply is extraordinarily instructive for us. And in the purport, in this eighth chapter, it is one of the most important purports we can read because it explains to us how we should approach the spiritual master. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replies to Prakashananda Saraswati's uh, question by saying, my spiritual master considered me to be the greatest of fool. And thus, he engaged me in the chanting of the holy names. Insinuating he was not qualified to study Vedanta. This was Nimai Pandit who had defeated Keshav Kashmiri. So clearly he was speaking in, in jest. But he said, my spiritual master considered me the greatest of fool. And so I'm chanting. But when I chant, I go into this ecstatic trance. I lose myself, I become a madman. I inquire to my spiritual master, what kind of mantra you have given me is give, making me mad? And, this, and my guru told me, this is the perfection of chanting. To have the mood of ecstatic love. You have achieved the perfection of all religious processes. Far beyond dharma, artha, kama, moksha. This you know, religion, economic development, sense enjoyment, even liberation. You have far surpassed by the chanting of the holy names. Because you have achieved Krishna. Love of God. The greatest of all treasures. Far beyond even. So, the Prakashananda Sarasati says, Yeah, I acknowledge what you have said is right. But can you comment something on Vedanta? And there, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Yes, this Mayavadi philosophy of Vedanta is completely ruining 
your consciousness because it is indirectly speaking on the Vedanta Sutras. And he systematically explained all the flaws. And then Prakashananda says, okay, if the indirect explanations are incorrect, then can you explain the direct meaning of the Vedanta Sutra? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in exquisite detail, explained Vedanta Sutra in the direct meaning, bringing on the devotional service. And by doing so, all the sannyasis were immediately convinced that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was on the right path. And they surrendered to him and understood that it is only by the chanting of the holy names can one find perfection. It is the post, post, postgraduate process of spiritual life. While the sannyasis thought it was for the sentimentalist or the unintelligent who were unqualified to study Vedanta, they became fully convinced by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's exquisite presentation, both in a humble mood and in detail. And this is how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very expertly delivered. And in that verse that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, my spiritual master considered me a fool, Srila Prabhupada gives extraordinary um, um, details of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasitakura's commentary on how to approach the spiritual master. And this is a very potent way, uh, purport to read when we are preparing to meet the spiritual master. And Prabhupada says that one should approach a spiritual master thinking themselves to be a fool. Fool number one. Because if we approach a spiritual master thinking we know, then the spiritual master thinks, okay, this person knows, I'll go on to the next person. Actually, he says, the spiritual master knows that the person doesn't know. But he also knows this person is not ready to yet hear. And so instead, I will acknowledge his high position and actually not reveal their lack of qualification. So Prabhupada says, if you really want to obtain the true mercy of the spiritual master, we should present ourselves actually not understanding anything and ask the spiritual master, please guide me as you think best. Often we go to the spiritual master and present our wish list. Guru, I want to do this, this, and this. Is it okay? And of course, Guru is left with nothing to say, but sure, you have my blessings. But if we really want to know his truest instructions to the Prabhupada writes, then we reveal with the simple question, you please advise what is best for me. As Prithu Maharaj and Srimad Bhagavatam, when Lord Vishnu came, at the end of the sacrifices and offered a benediction. How could the Maharaj responded? You tell me what is best for me. I don't know which benediction is good for me. And this is the mood. If we approach, then we can really obtain the mercy of the spiritual ministry. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu shows us that by that example. Serving the Vaishnavas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing us the etiquette. Advaita Acharya was his senior. Advaita Acharya prayed for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come, knowing it was only he who could deliver the fallen souls. So who was senior in ability? Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was constantly offering obeisances to Advaita Acharya, grabbing his feet. Advaita Acharya was quite old, and so when he tried to run away, Nimai would catch him and take the dust of Advaita Acharya's feet and rub it on his head. But Advaita Acharya was always trying to show who was truly boss. Normally in the material world, we all try to show ourselves as the supreme. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing us that the real Vaishnava always presents themselves as the most hum humble and fallen. And so following the etiquette, he was offering his respects to the elder Advaita Acharya. And in this pastime shown here, um, Advaita Acharya created a great scheme to really attract the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by preaching some bogus philosophy. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and started beating Advaita Acharya and Advaita Acharya is in ecstasy saying, see, now you all know who is free. But Chaitanya, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu constantly was falling at the feet of Advaita Acharya showing us the importance. The pastime of Haridas Thakur is beyond compare. Haridas Thakur is Dhamacharya. By material designations, we can say he was in a low-born family. He was not even allowed to enter into 
the temple of Lord Jagannath. But Krishna himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, every day after taking darshan, Lord Jagannath would go and meet Haridas Thakur, who was seated outside just taking darshan. I should not say just taking darshan, but taking darshan of the chakra, which is non different from taking darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of Lord Jagannath. And in this way, uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed us that any external designation has no merit for evaluating one's status in devotional service. What matters is one's heart and consciousness. And Haridas Thakur was a stalwart devotee, the Namacharya, teaching us the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. 300,000 names, 192 rounds a day, every day, chanting until the very end of his life fully surrendered in the most humblest of moods. Even when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was with his associates, Haridas Thakur, thinking himself to be disqualified, would not enter into that assembly and receive prasad with the devotees. So humble was Chaitanya Haridas Thakur. And how did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reciprocate? When Haridas Thakur left his body, it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself took Haridas Thakur's body on his lap, caressed it, and stood up, danced in ecstasy in Kirtan, took him to the ocean, bathed his body, and personally placed him inside. This is the service Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rendered to his people. And he's showing us how one can meet and serve the devotees. Again, I'm just trying to hit these in high level. He took initiation from Ishvara Puri. This is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But he showed us taking Diksha and the bona fide Guru Parampara is the most important process and critical in obtaining real knowledge. That's why Krishna said, Tadvidi paripate na paripashne na sevaya Vak neksham kite yanam jnani na sattvarshan One must approach the spiritual master. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself took initiation from Ishvara Puri in Gaya. And this pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu meeting Ramananda Rai, one of the most sweetest and instructive pastimes in Madhya Lila, chapter 8, Please go home or if you want, leave now and start reading it. It is so beautiful, so exquisite, and so instructive. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met Ramananda Rai. And here he shows us the mood of a disciple. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is presenting himself, asking questions of Ramananda Rai. And Ramananda Rai is saying, wait a minute, you are the one sitting in my heart inspiring me to speak what you yourself are already speaking. Krishna Skaviraj Goswami explains this, like in the ocean. An ocean uh, gives rise to clouds, which then rain back on top of the ocean. And the, the clouds are thinking, oh, I am watering the ocean. But they're simply giving back what they were given in the first place. Like this, Ramananda Roy is repeating what he has understood from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in answering Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's questions. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood of inquiry is what we have to learn. He inquired from Ramananda Rai with extraordinary sincerity, with the utmost humility, asking more and more and more. He was never tiring. Ten consecutive nights, he inquired from Ramananda Rai about all the perfection of life. And these question and answer sessions are so wonderful. And Krishna Skandaraj Goswami has explained them in a very lengthy chapter. And Prabhupada's purports, particularly in this chapter, are ex beyond compare. They're so wonderful. But here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing us that we must approach the bona fide sources of knowledge. We must inquire, inquire in a humble mood. And so in this pastime of Ramananda Rai, we see the ideal mood of the disciple and the Guru. In the interest of time, I'm going to move forward. Um, 
Just quickly on the left, this is the past time of delivering Amoga. Amoga criticized unjustly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So much so that his father and mother in law, father in law and mother in law were ready to disown him. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not the least bit insulted by that criticism. And when Amoga was dying of leprosy, it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who came and delivered him. He did not hold a grudge. This is the mood of a devotee. Tolerant and also never holds a grudge. This pastime on the right is a King Prataparudra. He wanted an audience with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If a king wanted to give us audience, we would jump at it in a heartbeat. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing us the need to be disciplined, to be very mindful of the allurements of the material world, to not be swayed by the illusory energy of Maya. When King Prataparudra, who was a great devotee, requested an audience, he refused. But he refused externally to show all of us that we must be extraordinarily careful in coming in contact with the material world because it will dampen, even further destroy our devotional service. But being so kind, actually internally, he was relishing a sweet relationship with King Patrupa in order, including showing to him a very intimate pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing in all seven Kirtan parties. And then towards the end of the Ratyatra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was taking rest in the garden. And King Patrupa in the guise of a dev uh, devotee, in the dress of a devotee, came and massaged the legs of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, giving him the utmost mercy. So externally, he was showing us this great important lesson uh, of being very, very careful in the devotional service. I'm going to skip this one for sure. We have to. That was the uh, Gunnicha Marjan uh, pastime. So I want to end with a discussion about Shikshashtakam prayers. These Shikshashtakam prayers are so important. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach us and give us this extraordinary gift. And he left us with what? Volumes and volumes of books? Eight verses. He left us with eight verses. So we can only imagine how important these eight verses are. How very special they are. They contain the very essence of spiritual perfection. Everything actually we need to know is contained within these eight verses. And thus Srila Prabhupada taught us the extreme importance of reciting these Shikshashtakam prayers every day. I'll ask, but don't need to raise your hands, are we chanting these prayers every day? If not, my only hope in the next 10 or 15 minutes by hearing some of this is that we'll have some inspiration to take the Srila Prabhupada's instruction. Because reciting these Shikshashtakam prayers is extraordinarily important. So please learn them and recite them every day. And we will be the extraordinary beneficiary of being able to appreciate that gift that Jaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give us. And that is Krishna Prima. Through the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. So this is the first verse. And here Jaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving us seven very powerful effects of chanting. It cleanses the heart. Our heart is full of so many impurities. It extinguishes the fire of life. How many of us have difficulties in the material world? Just a few of you? Well, this is the fire extinguisher to those difficulties. It is not more wealth. It is not a COVID vaccine. It is not uh, more fame or more followers or more beauty. It is chanting the holy names. This is truly the fire extinguisher in this material world. It gives us a very soothing effect. Not only will the miseries dissipate, but we'll obtain this very soothing uh, experience of devotional service. This chanting of the holy names, it is the life of all transcendental knowledge. What does that mean? It is the essence of everything. If you have understood the importance of chanting the holy names, you have understood all of the Vedas. My 10 minute signal has come. Rest assured, you only have 10 minutes left of me. It is an ocean of bliss. 
this chanting of the holy names, it is an ocean. Rupa Goswami compares that if you take all of the bliss and happiness of the material world and you combine it, it would amount to as much water that can be held in a hoofprint of a calf. When a calf walks, it makes a little indentation in the mud. Whatever water can be held in that little indentation, that is the entire happiness of the material world. And the happiness from devotional service compared is an ocean. As much water as there is in an ocean. And that is just an example because actually it is unlimited. These three names, Hare, Krishna, and Rama, give unending bliss. And one can taste what is real nectar. We are all looking for something sweet. Rasgulas, gulab jamun, some praise upon us, some you know different activity. We're all looking for something sweet. But what is actually sweet that we'll taste in our unjaundiced condition is chanting of the holy names. And when one tastes that nectar, it is so sweet, one will never utter anything else ever again because one wants to keep experiencing that taste. When we taste, chant Krishna, 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 the sweet is so profound that nothing else will want to be uttered on earth. This is the benediction of chanting of the holy names. And it bathes the soul and cleanses the cover. And thus, it is the way to conquer the material world. So these Chaitanya Mahaprabhu establishes to give us some faith in chanting of the holy names. These seven things are guaranteed to the chanter of the holy names. He further says in the second verse, all of my energies are contained within the holy names. What does that mean? He is non-different from his names. Just like chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, 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 Ram. We are in personal association with Krishna. He is dancing upon our tongues. But due to our conditioned state, we do not see it. But by continued chanting, we will soon come to see the most beautiful Supreme Lord dancing on our tongues. And he says there is not even rules to chant. Just chant anytime, anywhere, any place. Just chant. So powerful. But what is my misfortune? When we ask what our misfortune is, we get a long list of all these things. I have too much stress, I don't have enough this, I don't have enough sleep, I don't have that wealth. We can come up with a long list of misfortunes. But actually none of that is our misfortune, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is established. He's saying our only misfortune is, I don't have a taste for chanting the Holy Spirit. Because when we have that taste for chanting the holy names of the Lord, by solving that misfortune, then what all other so-called misfortunes become solved. So today, we can pray at the lotus feet of Guru Mahaprabhu, looking at his beautiful feet, and pray, please cure my greatest misfortune, which is, I don't yet have taste for chanting of the holy names of the Lord. If we pray in this way, He will certainly listen to you. Krishna Skaviraj Goswami says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, whatever is difficult becomes very easy when we surrender to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So yes, we may find chanting difficult. We may find our attraction to it very fleeting. But just pray to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give us the taste of the holy names. I know it theoretically, but it is not yet here. And He, by His unlimited mercy, Mahavadanaya, most merciful, will make it happen. So, this second verse, if we can just print on our arm, our real Durdaiva misfortune, then we are guaranteed success. We stop defining everything else as misfortune. But no, all those other misfortunes will also be solved because Jeto Dharma Namarjana. The heart will be cleansed. The fire of conditional life will also be solved by the chanting of the names. So, but I am so unfortunate, I have no attraction for them. So, what to do? 
So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, how to go from no taste of chanting to chanting Kirtaniya Sadahari, always chanting, what to do? Three-part formula, humility, tolerance, and offering respects to all and expecting none in return. By this three-part formula, we can go from no taste to chanting constantly. So powerful. We must take a humble position. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, every pastime we see in Chaitanya 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 Bhagavad, we'll see this mood of humility. Tolerance. So much tolerance he took. He even left his eternal consort and his most beloved mother to be able to deliver all of the conditioned souls. He tolerated his own discomforts. And of course, offering respects to all. We saw with Haridas Thakur, Advaita Acharya, and so many others. Yet he expected no respect in the sages of Arashi. He took the seat in the foot washing area. He expected no respect in return. So we always will see through these pastimes. And if we follow this three part formula, Kirtaniya Sadahadi is guaranteed. Constantly chanting. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, the benedictions of the holy names are a great misfortune despite them having all the powers. And now, in the third verse, how to chant the names. And so now, in the fourth verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu begins to introduce what is the pure consciousness, what is pure devotional service. It is free of all material desires, no wealth, no beautiful women, no followers, no desires. Not even... Moksha. Janmani, Janmani Shodi. He says, birth after birth. What do I want? Devotional service. The only desire is to serve Krishna. When we come to devotional service, we know nothing else, no other desire can compare. Krishna says, Param Dishtra Nivartate. By the higher taste of bhakti, all our less lower desires are automatically vanquished. So in this first, fourth verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu begins to bring us to this idea of pure devotional service, free of all the desires. And now, the effects of chanting become revealed. What happens? We become self-realized. We realize, I am the servitor of the Supreme Lord and the perfect of all prayers. What is the best of all prayers? Just make me a tiny, insignificant servant at your lotus feet. We go to the feet of Balakundri and make so many prayers. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this fifth verse, is showing to us what is the most perfect prayer. That is, just give me the opportunity to render devotional service by chanting the holy names. That is it. If I have that, I have everything. And if we begin to uh, pray in this way, then what happens? Our devotion starts to grow and grow. And we'll begin to see this mood of chanting where there is an ecstatic mood. Right now we may be chanting the holy names of the Lord due to some quota, some you know vows we may have taken. That is the best we can do. Because by doing so, we will soon, we, soon unearth this very ecstatic mood of chanting, where there are tears flowing, voices choking, hair standing on end, when we recite the holy names of the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the sixth verse is giving us the confidence. Yes, we may not have any taste today, but trust them. By the process of chanting the holy names, soon this very ecstatic mood will come by the chanting of the holy names. This is what he is assuring us in the sixth verse. And in the seventh verse, he is explaining the perfection of devotional service, this prema bhakti, that there is no attraction um, from, oh, sorry, from no attraction to unlimited, unending, cannot tolerate even a moment of separation from Krishna. That is real love. Right now, when we become separated from our bead bag, we think, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> That is the mood in our Savaka state. But don't worry, just take to the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And before we know it, the blink of the eye is too much separation from Krishna. 
as the gopis are chastising Lord Brahma, saying, You have created these islands which are separating me from Krishna. It is like 12 years or more. So by the power of chanting, this position will come. And ultimately, in the 8th verse, Krishna explains, or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains, the perfection of mood, of selfless service. One demands nothing of Krishna. Krishna, if you want to make me broken hearted by not being present before me, no problem. I just want your happiness. If your happiness is me being far away from you, I will go to the other end of the creation. If that is what makes you happy. True selfless love. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains the Shikshtashtakam prayers in the last chapter of uh, Chaitanya Chaitanya It is the sweetest of all chapters, so beautiful. And in explaining this verse, he explains the mood of Srimati Radharani and how selfless she is in her love. And if reading Ramananda Rai's pastimes didn't encourage you, then this one I hope will. Go read that immediately. It is so sweet. It will melt your heart. It is so amazing. And he explains this eighth verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is by explaining the love of Shri Mataji. How selfless she is, it is beyond comparison. So it is the perfection. So the flow of these eight verses, it takes us from understanding the effects of chanting the holy names to realizing our true misfortune. Then we get that formula to overcome them. Removing all of our material desires understanding our real position in that mood of perfect prayer will then bring about the ecstatic chanting of the holy names bringing us ultimately to this eighth verse of perfection so take it Mahaprabhu in eight verses is systematically bringing us to the perfection of life and what does he want us to do chant the holy names this greatest of gift he gave us through the process of chanting so these shushtakam prayers are so Powerful. Let us pray that we can have some faith in chanting them every day. Ideally, before chanting our japa, if you recite these Shikshtashrika prayers, as Shri Prabhupada taught us in the morning program, you'll see greater and more mercy from the holy names. So in conclusion, I said I had an agenda. My agenda in trying to speak something about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his pastimes was that we all will be inspired to obtain and acquire first for whoever doesn't have this most amazing Chaitanya Chaitanya We just glanced the surface of these uh, the surface of these pastimes. They're so exquisitely presented by Srila Prabhupada uh, and Krishna's Kamrajwa Swami in Chaitanya Chaitanya. So if you don't have it, today is the most auspicious day to acquire it on Gorpuni Day. So please acquire them. If you do, today we'll give them to you right from the altar, right from the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you have one set, you can take a second set because you must have three or four or five family members. Each member of the family wants their own cell phone. They should have their own Chaitanya Chaitanya. And for those of you who have multiple sets at home, please, I hope we can all start reading it. By bathing in this nectar, it is so extraordinary, it is so wonderful. And by doing so, by next Gorpunima, we'll begin to maybe experience some of those symptoms that Jaitanya Mahaprabhu has given in this Shikshastra performance. So, anybody would like to acquire Chaitanya Chaitanya please let the Daichitan Prabhu know. He'll arrange for you immediately uh, the opportunity to receive them from the altar. Uh, on this most suspicious day. And I would be extremely grateful if someone, at least one person, was inspired to take Chaitanya Chaitanya to today. That would be my greatest blessing. And maybe I'll have some hope of understanding the Shikshash and prayers. Thank you very much. Do we have any time for what? Are we ready to be sure? We have time. Right, we have a few minutes for any questions or discussion, comments, corrections before we move over to the next stage of our program. Yes? Just to speak about. <laughs> Thank you.
and specifically with Guru or with the association with the devotees? Oh, association with the devotees. Devotees, yeah. So the question is how to remain in association with devotees. We are somewhat limited right now with COVID and we have these electronic mediums of association and whatnot. So, you know, Srila Prabhupada established ISKCON for one purpose, to give association. We called it like the Chamber of Commerce, he explains in Nectar of Instruction. That the Chamber of Commerce is there to help business people succeed in business. ISKCON is to give the conditioned souls an opportunity to associate together to succeed in devotional service. So, the association uh, is very important. So, you know, coming to the Sunday program, Shiva Prabhupada established is most important in uh, our association. Uh, by hearing uh, Shiva Prabhupada's lectures, we are associating directly with him. By reading his books, we are directly associating with him. By following the instructions, we are associating. And so, um, yes, that physical association is really important. You know, once a week coming to the temple and participating in the Sunday Peace Program is so instrumental in our devotional service. It's why Shri Prabhupada tirelessly worked to establish 108 temples. He could have just stopped at giving us the books. Why he gave us the temples? Because we need that charging of the battery. This computer will not charge because the cord has fallen out. If we fall away from the feet of Shishi Radha Kunjabihari, our spiritual battery will start to diminish. So we need that recharging. That association is important. But as Grahastas, we cannot be here every day. We cannot be doing things every day. So through our other practices, through our sadhana, through association with Prabhupada's books, we can remain in constant association. Because as you said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu established, that is the most important means to protect our bhakti. He says it is a fence around our bhakti lata, the creeper of devotional service, like a, a vine. If you want to protect it, you put a fence around it so people don't run over it or trample it with their feet. What are we going? What is the fence around our bhakti? It is the association. The engagement of our So that is what's important. Okay, I think the budgets are ready, the dramas are ready. We'll have uh, Arti, we'll have Abhishek, still many, many festivities, so thank you very much. And kind of tolerance, please forgive me for any mistakes I have made in this presentation. Thank you.